So I've been having some fun playing around with Colorforth. I made my little emulator for the F18 core last weekend, and then I've been trying to program it. And of course, the best way to program it is to write code in Colorforth and write an assembler for that. So I did both of those. Uh, this is my own little editor. I thought about using the ArrayForth system and then just extracting blocks from that. They have a ni pretty nice editor that's kind of similar to this, actually. Uh, I made a deserializer for that format, but you know, I thought that it would be just fun to make my own editor. Why not? It turned out to be just a few hundred lines of F sharp, and it's nice and uh, you know to my to my liking. Just kind of the fourth way. Make it yourself. Why not? So it's kind of like uh, Vim. You have a normal mode and an insert mode. And in normal mode, you can move around the selection, just the H J K L keys. And then in insert mode, you can type things. Type whatever you like. Um, and what you're typing is white space separated tokens. So that's what Colorforth really is. It's just simple white space separated tokens. There's almost no limit to what you can put in a token, just no white space. Uh, and there's really no, you know, predetermined meaning to the kind of syntax of what you've typed. Essentially, words are words. Um, but what you do is you colorize these things to give them a purpose. Red words are definitions, so they become names for places in the dictionary as things are being compiled, addresses. Yellow words are immediate, they uh, get executed immediately at compile time, or at assembly time. Green words get compiled, so green words are usually calls to red words, they've been previously defined. White words are comments, and gray words are something that's it's not common, I guess. it's. Uh, words that represent instructions directly. So I didn't want to have a, have a macro system um, that would spit out instructions. I just have actual words for each of the instructions. And this is an idea that Jeff Fox came up with for his AHA system. And Chuck Moore actually took that for his Etherforth system. So I thought I'd go ahead and, and use that. So some differences between this and the green array system is I, I don't have magenta words for, for variables. I don't have, uh, you know, a macro dictionary versus the regular fourth dictionary. I just have, you know, immediate words for anything that you want to have be a macro. And uh, you can't have green words that call macros. I don't know why I'm going into all that detail. I'll talk about all this in the blog. But the editor is uh, pretty nifty. You can, uh, you know, switch the colors by just hitting shift and R, Y, G, W, or A for red, yellow, green, white, or gray. Um, a normal thing in a color fourth system is to have the comments be kind of separated from the code. In the green array system, the array fourth system, there's shadow blocks. You have pairs of blocks. One block will have code, one block will have comments, and you can just toggle between the two views really easily. So you keep all your documentation in one place and your code in another right next to each other, you know, so they don't get out of sync. It's really easy to keep them in sync, but they're not, you know, your code view isn't overwhelmed with comments. So I did something kind of similar. I can I can turn on and off the comments just by hitting C. You can toggle whether the white words show up or not. Uh, and that's good enough for me. Another type of word is blue words, which don't normally show up, but these are format words. These are essentially edit time words. So one way to think of everything is that you have words that get executed at different times. So blue words are author time words, or they're edit time words. You know, the editor itself will run those words at edit time to do formatting. Yellow words are kind of assembly time words that get you know run either by the compiler or assembler at that point in time, and then green words are you know called at runtime. Um, the way that the editor works in general, and kind of a normal fourth thing to do, is to have blocks, screen-sized blocks of code that you work on. And so here you can just hit some key to to load the different blocks. We're looking at block one right now with the documentation for the editor, but I can switch you know to block two. Three, four, five, six. So here's some other code, you know, that I'm working on. This is what it normally looks like: a bunch of red words that define things, followed by you know green words that are calling other previously defined things. Maybe some inline gray word instructions and yellow uh, macros. So anyway, you can switch between the different blocks that way. And scrolling down a little bit further. Let's see, you can uh, delete, yank, and put things, which is kind of a normal thing in, in a Vim. Um, one interesting thing is as you delete things or yank them, they end up going onto a stack. So I can like yank, 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 and it co cuts those three things onto a stack. And I can go somewhere else in the document and put, 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 and put those three things back. 
So there's no way to you know copy lines or select you know chunks of things and move them around, but it's real easy and there's usually not that many tokens going on anyway in one of these pages that you can just uh, you know yank them one by one and then put them back one by one and it's easy enough. It's also infinite undo in the system, so I can you know anything I've done, you've seen me do it already here, I can just undo it. Makes it a nice fearless editor, just do whatever you like, you're never gonna mess it up, you can always undo. And it was pretty easy to do in F sharp, by the way, using all the immutable collections, you know, so the whole state of the editor is in, in an immutable record type, and even the sequence of tokens. I just have two lists, one everything to the left of the cursor, everything to the right, and as you're moving around and doing things, just shifting things from one list to another. Um, and it was really easy though to keep just a history of the changes as mutable collections and just restore them at will to have infinite undo. You can insert before or after the cursor. Um, you can open a line under wherever you're currently editing. And uh, then I have gray words, which I've already mentioned, but they are a little bit special in that you can't just type whatever you like as a gray word. You have to uh, type something that actually makes sense as a valid uh, instruction. So let's see. Let's say say I uh, scroll down a tiny bit so we can see. If I switch to gray words here, you know I can type you know dr for drop or just d for dupe, or p for pop or pu for push, kind of thing. But it's not going to just let me type anything I like uh, because these gray words get serialized as direct instructions to be packed and it's not valid to just type anything you like as a gray word. Uh, but that's a pretty nice little system. Now the the whole purpose of this thing though, let me zoom back out so you can see my whole screen. Um, the whole purpose is that you can load up these blocks and say save them and the assembler will immediately see the last saved block and assemble it for you. And so you can see here what the assembler has generated. So each row is a uh, word for the F18 and it's broken into the, the four instruction slots for each word. And so you can see, you know, the actual opcodes for everything that's being packed. You can see labeled positions in the code. The red name that you usually have used in the source shows up over here. And then you can see the instructions that were actually packed, all the gray instructions that were packed for those words. And you can see green literals. You can see uh, maybe like a jump instruction to an address will be a named address. You can see, of course, in the opcodes, it's a given address. But uh, like this 2 is a jump, and the 0 is the, the address. So it's jumping to 0, which is the address of this echo. So it's an infinite loop to itself, essentially. Um, and then you can see the yellow macro words that were executed at assembly time, along with the you know, the, what they produced. Uh, so let's see like an actual demo of something interesting. Let's see, here's something that uh, prints the alphabet to the screen. So a real simple little loop that just goes through and emits the letters of the alphabet to the console. Now as soon as I've saved that block, the assembler picked it up and assembled it to block zero, and then the machine, when it starts up, starts reading code off of block zero. So I can just run the machine and there you go. It uh, prints the alphabet. Let's see if there's something else, like uh, here's a hello world. If I save that, it assembles that, and I can run that. It prints color forth rocks. Mm -hmm. you know, so this was some code that would unpack the message that's stored in these literals here into individual ASCII characters and, and spewed them to the console. So that's the basic idea. Nice little color forth editor and assembler. And uh, we, that goes along with the simulator that's already been posted. All this is up on GitHub, and it's great fun to play with. Have fun.